Grade 12, we are busy with revision and I'm on question 3 of paper 1. Uh, normally it will be a two-point perspective drawing and this is November 2018's final year paper and I'm going to use it as an example for your revision. So you are going to read the question and if you read it you'll see that they've given you two completed views and over here they've given you an incompleted view. The picture plane has been given, horizontal line, the ground line, and then the standpoint just below the ground, or the station point just below the ground line. Right, so these lines can obviously differ from question to question. They can be positioned at different places. So this is just an example paper. Um, so the instructions are obviously are to complete the perspective drawing. Make sure that your paper is aligned with the ground line. So if this is skew, then your uh, picture won't line up with the memo and that can cause problems. Second point is to determine and label the vanishing points and then show internal lines seen through the doorway. Show all construction and then no hidden detail is required. I'm going to start off here with a couple of things. So the first thing is to look at our constructions, which actually count six marks. So to get those construction points, you need to first step is to see at what angle is the top view. Now normally a top view will be at 30 degrees and 60 degrees. That's most of the cases. But in this case, it was um, at an angle of 45 and 45 to the right. So therefore, we are going to use our 45 degree set square to determine our vanishing points. Now, to determine the vanishing points, we are going to start here at the station point. You are going to place your 45 degree set square on the center there of the station point. You're going to draw a 45 degree line. I won't draw it through the whole picture. I'm just going to mark it there and then I'll complete it there at the top and let it go or run through the picture plane. Then from there, I will bring it straight down to the horizontal line. Okay, so the same will go for the left because this is 45 degrees to the left as well. I'm going to draw a 45 degree line to the picture plane and then from there I'm going to bring it straight down and mark it on the horizontal line. Now you can see that I've highlighted that point over there because those are my vanishing points. So very important now is the labeling of the vanishing points. There's only one way to label it. So this is called the left vanishing point and therefore we are going to write LVP. On this side, it's the right vanishing point, and therefore it will be RVP, right vanishing point, left vanishing point. Do not say vanishing point one, vanishing point two. Also keep it in capital letters and write it horizontal. There are penalties, okay, if you didn't label it correctly. The next point you can get for construction is by showing your knowledge. And your knowledge tells you that all points from this top view must go to the standpoint. So by drawing a construction line over there, you actually get a mark. By bringing it from the picture plane straight down, you will get another mark. Any point that touches the the picture plane and is actually on the ground will touch the ground line. So I'm going to bring that point down to the ground line. Now to draw our perspective drawing, starting from the ground line, like I said, anything that touches the ground line from the ground line has to go to the left vanishing point and to the right vanishing point. So this here gives us our construction points. The next thing I see on my paper over here without drawing the picture is that I see a circle. Now when I have a circle, I know that with most cases when I see a circle, 
it has to be divided into 30, 60 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my 45 degree set square. I'm going to place my 30 degree set square on top of that. And from the center of the circle, I'm actually going to draw in the constructions over here. So there's my 30 degree line. Let's turn this around. There's my 60 degree line to the circle there. And then I'm just going to take this ruler away. I'll hold down my 45. And then I'm going to draw my 30 degree line towards that direction. And then again the 60. There. And then the last point is the 45. There. So the reason why I did that, it's still construction and I'm going to get a marks for dividing my circle, circle into its equal parts. Now starting with the drawing, I've already um, drawn a line over here for this base over here. I'm going to draw fast and you can play and pause because this is quite a long and also quite a difficult two point perspective drawing. So I've now drawn the base over there. I'm going to bring the height across as well. So the heights I can get you from my views. And I can draw that in there. Take that to my left vanishing point. Draw that in there, and then this height can also go to the right vanishing point. That there can go to the right vanishing point. And these are all construction lines. Right. So the next thing I want to see is these high, it's like pillars or walls that go up. And I'm going to take that to the standpoint. And on the far side, take that to the standpoint. And then bring it down. Once I've got that point over there, I actually don't need to bring that one down. I can just take this one across to the vanishing point, left vanishing point over there. Now I can darken that line there. I can also darken the step over there. Now the thickness of those walls, let's quickly draw that in as well. To the standpoint. I can now bring that up there as well as this one over here, bring it down and that will give me the thickness of the walls. Okay, so height is a problem for some people. So to get the height here, I'm going to bring, I'm going to use my 45 degree set square because this angle is at 45. And because it's at 45, I can use this height or this angle to determine height. So I'm using that corner there, that's the height I'm looking for, and I'm going to bring it down, and then I'm going to bring the height of these walls across to that point over there. From there, I can actually bring it straight down. To my left vanishing point, And this will give me the height for this front corner of the wall. I can also now draw in the height of the back wall. And bring that straight down, straight down, straight down. Okay, so this, that's my walls over there. So the next thing over here is 
to determine another height, I'm just quickly going to show you the roof height quickly. And then we'll skip on to the circle before we have too many lines. So I'm going to bring the roof height. So that's the height or the roof that I want to find is that top point over there. I'm going to bring this across or down. Then I'm going to bring that roof height across to there. That's the point that I'm going to use. And I'm going to take that to the left vanishing point across like that. So by doing that, I can now bring that point of the roof to the stand point, so the original point, and if I bring that down, it will actually give me the height of my roof. Okay, so that point will go up there, and then this wall over here We'll go to the right vanishing point and let's quickly just draw it in. It will disappear behind the roof over there. I want to find the angle of these roofs as well. So I'm going to use that line there. It's 45 degrees again to get the height. So I'm going to bring that across there and then straight down. Then bring this height to that point there. Let's bring the second one as well. Just mark it there. And then I can take it to the left vanishing point. And this is how you find your heights for anything in a two-point perspective drawing. So now I'm bringing that original point down. So this one here to the stand point. From the picture plane, straight down. And that gives me the angle of my roof. I can also join that up there and join that point up there. Right, so that's, uh, that's then the roof that's been drawn over there and now I'm going to focus quickly on our circle before we get too confused. Like I said, I am trying to draw quite far so you can just play and pause. So I now have one, two, three, four, five, six points and that point over there, the starting point that I need to label. So I'm going to start with where I'm going to start with this arc and bring it down. And I'm going to mark it on this line here. I also know that the one below it, or the bottom line, okay, will also start there. Right, so now I'm going to take all these points and take it back against a surface that I know I have, or a height that I know I have. Okay, meaning that on this line over here, I'm going to mark each point of this arc. So I begin to bring that point down. That's the first one. Let's bring the second one down as well to the standing point. The middle one. The one there on the far side. And that one. And the last one. Right, so once I've got that, I can now go and bring them all down. Onto that surface. And then the last one. Right, so by doing that, I can use those points and bring them forward. So uh, that one there will stay there. This one will then go forward from the left vanishing point. So from the left vanishing point, I'm going to do that for each of these.
And then the last one will also stay there. So now that I've got all these lines, that's construction lines, I'm going to go back to these original points and I'm going to bring them down to our station point. So there we go, station point, and then bring it down to that first line and I'm going to mark it there. Second one, also to the station point. Bring it down to that first. There we go. The middle one. To the station point. Down there. And then bring it down. The next point is that one there. And this takes some time. So I'll mark that one there. The last one. And then mark it over there and then that one's there so you can see over there that's the r over there now i can't really draw the whole thing in yet um because i still have this um it looks like an octagon half an octagon that i also have to draw in that space but what i can do is i can also draw these bottom the bottom arc i can actually draw that one in there so to find the bottom points, I'm going to have to do the same thing I did with the angled lines. So um, those angles over there, let me just quickly see over here. So the angles over there, I'm going to have to bring the height. So there are a few ways that I can do this, um, but I'm going to... Now bring those points down. So the same, just bring those points straight down. The next one, straight down. Let me just make sure that I'm on the right points over here. Straight down. That one there, straight down. And that one there, straight down. So once I've got the points at the bottom, I can also take it from the left vanishing point so the first one is there, the second one will go from here to there, and that's where I'll mark it. The next one is from this position, uh, slightly higher, there we go, to there. Let me just use a longer set square. From the left vanishing point so I now have that point and then it's this one that will go to that one I didn't draw it down and that's the last one that I'll actually see there so this means I can now go and I can actually draw in an arc that will join up those points. So I'm going to start with this point here that then touches the ground line. It won't go over it so I need to just fix that there and then it will join up there. Right and then I can actually join up these ones as well so let's just start there by drawing that in there bringing that it's not the most beautiful arcs i've drawn right so there we go i've actually messed it up a little bit but it's fine you get the idea that will go around, but I'll do that after I've drawn in that 
octagon. So the octagon now, I can start here with the first corner, which is on that same line that I've marked off all the um, circle points. And this is what's going to make it a bit confusing is all the lines. So I'm going to bring it down. And once I've got that point there, I can actually draw in this line over here. So the next point over here will then, from there, will go from the left vanishing point forward. And then I can bring that point down. And from there, down to that point over there. So this will give me the first side. Now I need to determine the height of this um, half octagon. So I'm going to bring that forward and then bring this down. And then I'm going to bring the height of the roof across here. And now I can just follow it. So from there, I'm just going to follow it, find it there, and then bring that point that I've got over there down to the left vanishing point. And that should give me that corner over there. So that's the first side of the octagon. The next point over here, again, I can now bring that point across and then I can bring it down. I'm going to actually bring it all the way down so that I can also find the bottom part of it. So the bottom is on this line on the step. I'm going to bring the step across. So I'm now following that point. It's on there. I'm going to bring that point to the left vanishing point. Draw a line there. So somewhere on that line will be that point. So if I bring this back down to the standing point and then straight down again, I'll find it there and I can connect that point there. To find the height, I'm going to use that height point as well that I've drawn. Bring it to the left vanishing point. Just a construction line here. And now I need to follow it. So it's on that point there. That's where it will be. So I'm going to draw in my line there. And that's the second point of that octagon. So the next point over here now is this line over here. I'm going to see if it lies at the angle of 45. It lies at an angle of 45. That's 45, which means I can actually bring this to the right vanishing point. This makes it a lot easier. Bring that point to the stand point and bring that straight down. And that gives me that point there. And then from this point, it's going to go down to the right vanishing point. I'm going to draw it in there. And then I can add that there. So that gives me the last point I actually needed for this. Um, I'm just going to finish this arc over here and a few finishing touches here at the bottom. There we go. And that line over there. Right, so still a lot to do over here with this drawing. I'm now going to determine the top point of this roof. Now I've got the roof height over here. It's the one that I brought across here. It's already gone to the uh, left vanishing point. And I now just need to bring that point down to my... And I'm going to use that point. I see it is there, so I'm bringing it down. 
and it should lie on that position over there. Right, so once I've got that, I can now join up all these corners. And that gives me that roof. So now for this point over here, I can bring it to the right vanishing point. Um, I need to determine where does it stop. So I'm going to bring that far corner there to the standpoint. Let's just mark it there. I'm keeping my eye on it because it, the lines are getting quite busy. And there we go. So that's my wall over there. So now I've got the wall on the inside. It's a hidden detail over here, so I need to find that point as well. I see I have drawn a 45 degree line running in line with it. I'm just going to circle it so that I know that's the one that I want to use. I'm going to bring that point straight down. So let's just make sure it's that point before I just assume. So yes, that one is perfect. Then I'm going to bring it straight down and then I'm going to use the height here of the floor and bring it across to that point which I already have done. So there we go, it's this point here. And then I'm going to take it to the left view. So on that line that I've now drawn over there will be all the detail for my walls. So I'm going to bring that wall to the standing point. I'm also going to bring the doors down. So there's the door inside of the opening there. Another opening there. And then I'm going to bring all those lines down. And then the last one there. Okay, and then while I've got that, I can now draw in the wall. And on this side, the same. So I'm just going to check. There's the wall. It's the first line there. This over here will go to the right vanishing point to give me that opening there. So now I need to determine the height of this door opening. Again, I'm going to use the same line that I've got over here. And then I'm going to bring the door opening across to that point. So I'm just going to mark it there. From that point, I can bring it down to the left vanishing point. And I'm going to actually draw it in. So this will give me the height of the opening. This corner over here will go, because it's above the vanishing points, it will come back down to the right vanishing point, And then from the left, it will go across. Now a lot of people are going to forget about that. And then I can bring that down there. So now with the roof, the roof is also higher than um, the vanishing point. So I need to bring this roof down to that point over there. And then from there I can draw the thickness of that ceiling. And then I can add that. So that, that's my outer structure finish. So the, Next point over here is to draw the wall or the floor wall running on the inside. So the best way for me now to do it as fast as possible is to draw a corner there and bring the inside of that wall down to the standing point. And from there, let's just follow it again from there back down to there. And then I'm going to bring that across there. So there we go. This is the answer and 
I hope actually that it's a long drawing that I've showed you some technique. It's not the neatest that I've drawn it, but I'm sure if you focus on the circles and how to do the circles, find the heights of uh, different roof structures, um, determine your vanishing points in the correct way, then you should succeed in a two-point perspective drawing. Good luck.